Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are taking a look at two new MSI RTX 4090 graphics cards, the Supreme X and the Gaming X Trio. Basically what I want to know is how do they compare, what are the actual differences, and is the Supreme X worth the price premium? Now in terms of MSRPs, the base model Gaming Trio is $1600 US, but the Gaming X Trio, which we have, is $1650 US. Basically the X versions clock 3% higher for a 3% increase in price. So based on that, you might as well get the non-X version and then just manually overclock it. Then we have the Supreme X, which is $1700 US, so 6% more than the Gaming Trio and a mere 3% more than the Gaming X Trio. And assuming that you had your pick of either of these models at the MSRP, you'd probably think the Supreme X is the way to go, and maybe you'd be right, so let's take a closer look. From the front, they do look very similar, but also, I guess not really. I mean, in terms of size, they are basically identical. The Gaming X Trio measures 337mm long, and the Supreme X 336mm long. They both pack a tri 3 thermal design, using three Torx Fan 5.0 fans. They're both roughly the same height, 142mm for the Supreme and 140mm for the Trio, so the only real difference from the front is the fan shroud design. The Trio uses an all plastic design which doesn't look bad, certainly much nicer than the Gigabyte Gaming OC for example, but it does look a little cheap next to the Supreme X which is largely wrapped in brushed aluminium. And it's a similar story side on, they're roughly the same thickness, 77mm for the Trio and 78mm for the Supreme. They both feature the 16 pin connector in the exact same position, along with the dual bar switch. Even the heatsink looks very similar, though again, it's the Supreme X that looks a little fancier here with some better RGB effects and branding. Still, despite both models sharing similar dimensions, the Supreme X is noticeably heavier, and after heading to the scales, this was confirmed at 2,423 grams versus 2,170 grams, making the more premium model 12% heavier, which is a substantial increase given they appear very similar otherwise. So we'll look at this more closely when tearing them down. Now moving around to the rear side of the cards, both look very good with full size aluminium backplates, as you'd expect on an RTX 4090. The Supreme X looks exceptional here, as MSI chose not to plaster the card with stickers, as we've seen from numerous other models. In fact, the serial number can be found above the PCIe connector, so I really like that but the Trio, it's not quite as clean, but still compared to some of the other models we've seen, a single sticker here, it's not too bad, but I feel MSI should have avoided placing any stickers on their back plates, and I'd like to see them do that moving forward, so put it on the PCIe slot, it's a lot cleaner. Anyway, the all black back plate on the Trio looks nice, though the cutouts towards the end of the card, they don't look terribly practical, I can't imagine they allow for much airflow, so aesthetics do appear to have been the priority here, and sadly, it's the same story with the more premium Supreme X model. MSI has gone with some random cutouts, which sure, they look quite neat, but they are going to be extremely limiting when it comes to airflow, so that could hurt the thermal performance of these MSI models. Moving around to the IO panel, we find that both models feature the exact same layout, as well as the exact same bracket. So that is to say both models offer three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs and a single HDMI 2.1a output on a triple slot bracket with some cutouts. Now, as both of these graphics cards are behemoths weighing in excess of 2kg, they will probably require some extra support to avoid sag and potentially damaging your motherboard's PCIe slot. For the Supreme X, MSI has included an adjustable stand which is excessively tall and it looks kind of janky in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, the build quality is great, it's a well made stand, I'm just not a fan of the design. Something more fixed in place would appeal a lot more to me. Like what we saw with Gigabyte's Gaming OC for example. I actually quite like the look of the Gaming X Trio support, but unfortunately it's pretty useless at combating GPU sag, and depending on your motherboard and case, it's not always usable. For example, we recently built a new gaming PC for our video editor on a live stream, and funnily enough, found that the Gaming X Trio support wasn't supported in MSI's own Prospect 700R case when using their Z790 carbon motherboard, as the motherboard's primary PCIe x 16 slot is situated too low on the board. Still, in most situations, you should be able to install it, the only issue being that when you can, it does basically nothing, other than look kind of cool, but of course its purpose is to support the graphics card, and as far as we can tell, it doesn't really do that, so it's merely a cheap gimmick. Okay, it's now time to tear these graphics cards down for a close look at the cooler, and of course the PCB beneath. 
Now this is interesting. The Gaming X Tro is the first RTX 4090 graphics card that we've seen that doesn't feature a vapor chamber. Instead, MSI has gone with a simple nickel plated copper base plate that connects to half a dozen heat pipes. That said, the base plate does feature raised sections for the memory, reducing the need for thick thermal pads, and this should improve memory temperatures, especially when compared to models that opted for thicker pads to take up that space. The Supreme X, on the other hand, has a massive nickel plated copper vapor chamber that makes direct contact with eight heat pipes, and this is where that extra 12% weight has gone. MSI has once again been careful to minimize the space between the GDDR6X memory and the heatsink by including an aluminium spacer, so again, that should help with memory temperatures. Now, helping to support the weight of these massive heatsinks on the PCB is a black anodized structural bracket, which connects to the IO bracket. This structural bracket has also been used as a heat spreader to remove heat from part of the VRM, basically half of the power stages on the PCB. Speaking of the PCB, both models share the exact same design, and with just a few exceptions, they are exactly the same. The only difference between them is the number of power stages and inductors on the front side, along with the number of capacitors on the rear side. The Supreme X packs 26 MPS MP86957 70 amp power stages, while the Tro offers a rather substantially cut down 18 70 amp power stages. How much difference this will make to actual overclocking performance, given how locked down these RTX 4090 graphics cards are by NVIDIA, it is hard to say, but of course we'll look at that in a moment. The only other noteworthy design element here focuses on the backplates, both of which do feature thermal pads, allowing for the removal of heat from the rear side of the PCB, so that is great to see. Overall, both models do look good, though there are some interesting differences in the coolers, so I am very intrigued to see how they compare. So to find out, let's go over some stress test results. Here's a look at how the Gaming X Trio operates after an hour of Hitman 3 at the 4K resolution using the maximum in-game quality settings. These temperatures were recorded in a 21 degree room installed inside an ATX case with the doors closed. Here we see the GPU hit a hotspot temperature of 86 degrees, though the fan speed was very low at just 1400 RPM, and this generated 38 decibels of noise. The average GPU temperature peaked at 76 degrees and the memory at 78 degrees, while the typical core clock frequency was 2,790 megahertz. Now, under the exact same test conditions, the Supreme X saw a peak GPU hotspot temperature of just 75 degrees, with an average GPU temperature of 66 degrees. The memory also peaked at just 74 degrees, though it's worth noting that the fan speed was substantially higher at 2,000 RPM, generating just 40 decibels of noise. That said, the sustained clock frequency was actually slightly lower at 2,275 MHz in this test, and I was running with the gaming BIOS enabled. Now, time for some overclocking. By default, the Gaming X Tro has a 450 watt limit, and with a maximum 106% power limit, the BIOS will allow you to go as high as 480 watts. I should also note that while the Supreme X and all other RTX 4090 graphics cards that we've seen include a quad 8 pin to single 16 pin adapter, the Gaming X Tro includes just a triple 8 pin to single 16 pin adapter, limiting power usage to 450 watts. This allowed for a stable core frequency of 2,910 MHz, which resulted in an average power draw of just 435 watts, while the memory peaked at 24 gigabits per second. This increased the GPU hotspot to 87 degrees and the memory temperature to 82 degrees. That said, the fan speed didn't appear to ramp up, instead remaining at a relatively low 1450 RPM, and here you couldn't hear it over the very quiet case fans. So even when overclocked to the max, the Gaming X Tro was very manageable. Now the Supreme X has a 480 watt BIOS by default, though it can only go as high as 520 watts, which is lower than the 600 watt target of the ASUS and Gigabyte models that I've already reviewed, so this is a disappointing discovery. Maxed out, the Supreme X achieved a core clock frequency of 2,940 MHz, so just 30 MHz higher than the Gaming X Trio, a mere 1% difference there. The fans again spun at 2,000 RPM, and this saw a peak hotspot temperature of just 76 degrees, so very cool there, even considering the slightly high fan speeds. Still, in our testing, the Supreme X didn't even reach 480 watts, so it's not exactly an extreme overclocking model. Right, so here's how these two MSI RTX 4090s compare with models that we've already looked at. 
Average GPU temperatures for the Supreme X are about where you'd expect them to be. 66 degrees with a fan speed of 2000 RPM, so basically identical performance to that of the ASUS Tough Gaming, Colorful Vulcan, and Gigabyte's Gaming OC. Then, for whatever reason, using the gaming BIOS, the Gaming X Trio behaved a lot like what you'd expect from a silent mode, spinning the fans at just 1400 RPM. It was nice and quiet, though temperatures did jump to 76 degrees, which is 4 degrees higher than that of the FE model. Then when overclocked, the Supreme X increased the average GPU temperature by 2 degrees, hitting 68 degrees, which is about the best result we've seen yet, though be aware most other models were consuming around 50 watts more, which did only allow for an extra 30 to 40 megahertz when overclocked. The Gaming X Tro also saw a 2 degree increase, but that did mean that it was now 2 degrees hotter than the FE model, though the fan speed was lower, but so was power consumption. As for the GPU hotspot temperatures, the Supreme X maxed out at just 75 degrees, which is again a comparable result to that of the ASUS Gigabyte and Colorful models that we've already looked at. And again, the Gaming X Trio did run much hotter due to the much lower fan speed, so given that, the results here aren't bad. Once again, we see that when overclocked, the operating temperature for these MSI models doesn't really change that much, nor does the fan speed, as power only increased by 10 to 25 watts, resulting in a 1 degree increase. So although the Supreme X provided the best thermal results here, it was again consuming around 50 watts less than that of competing products. Finally, here's a look at the GDDR6X memory temperatures. Stock the MSI cards aren't amazing, but the results are certainly acceptable. The Supreme X hit 74 degrees, while the Gaming X Trio and its much lower fan speed hit 78 degrees, both are well under the NVIDIA Founders Edition model. The Gaming X Trio was comparable to the Tough Gaming, though the ASUS model was louder, while the Supreme X was 10 degrees hotter than the Gaming OC, with a similar fan speed. Then once again we see that the overclocked results are much the same, as power usage for the MSI models didn't really increase by a noteworthy margin. Just lastly, here's a really quick look at gaming performance. I'm not going to bother wasting your time with multiple games, Cyberpunk 2077 is more than enough. Basically, the Gaming X Trio and Supreme X perform like every other RTX 4090 out there, both stock and overclocked. At most, we're looking at a 1% deviation in performance, so that's it really. So there you have it, the MSI RTX 4090 Supreme X and RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio, both of which are very solid products. Personally though, I think I'd gravitate towards the Supreme X if I was a 4090 shopper, as saving 50 to $100 on the Trio models doesn't really make sense. Well, from a performance standpoint, it certainly makes sense, but the Supreme X is a more premium product with a superior cooler, upgraded power delivery, and of course the higher power limits. So when spending $1,600 US or more on a graphics card, you're kind of looking for a premium product. And unfortunately, the Supreme X did ultimately disappoint when it comes to overclocking, as did the Gaming X Trio with unnecessarily low power limits. And I should clarify that I'm not actually disappointed with the stock power limits being low, as this does offer the most optimal experience, minimizing noise and thermals while sacrificing no real performance. However, for those of you who want to squeeze every last frame out of their graphics card or perhaps upgrade the cooling using a water block, the 480 watt hard limit of the Gaming X Trio and 520 watt limit of the Supreme X is underwhelming to say the least. We've already seen competing products from the likes of ASUS and Gigabyte hit 600 watts, even for their base models, and that makes the Supreme X look a bit silly in my opinion. It also means something like the Gigabyte Gaming OC or ASUS Tough Gaming are better choices for those of you looking and installing a water block. So for those of you who enjoy tuning and tweaking your PC hardware, these MSI RTX 4090s, they're not going to be all that appealing. But for those of you who just install their hardware and get gaming, there's certainly nothing wrong with either model. And with that, I am going to end this review. If you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. I'll probably do an RTX 4090 roundup video at some point in the future, including a few more models, so we can sort of see how they all stack up. But other than that, we'll be moving on to RTX 4080s and then, of course, all the RDNA 3 GPUs, so make sure you subscribe for that. Also, if you'd like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, you can sign up at Floatplane or Patreon. Either of those will give you access to some pretty cool perks. We have an exclusive Discord server where you can ask questions and chat with the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. Tim and myself get together at least once a month and do a live stream where we answer your questions live and talk about the goings on in the industry for that month. Uh, behind the scenes content, there's also Q&A. So a lot of cool stuff there if you're interested. But if not, 
that is perfectly fine and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host Steve and I'll see you again next time.